Hello guys, my name is Arun Tiagi and let's continue our journey where we are discussing system designs. So today I'm <coughs> going to discuss another uh, product from Google, which is Google Docs, uh, Google document and the main focus, uh, you know, which, which I will put emphasis on is basically how people collaborate on a Google document, right? They, uh, try to uh, build a document while they are working in parallel from different places, you know, and <clears throat> from different clients. Okay, so let's start with it. First, let's discuss the high level design, uh, functional and non functional requirement. So, in functional requirement, uh, basically, what we are going to cover is document collaboration. By that, I mean is <clears throat> how people, you know, at the same time they are editing the document and um, um, multiple people are actually working on same document and how this system is going to uh, do the conflict resolutions right so second is about that only that how you will do the conflict resolutions while people are working in parallel third main functional requirement i will focus on is if we want to see the history who edited what who edited what you know the entire history of all the operations we are going to focus on that functional requirement only then extended requirement uh, we will see now uh, if we can discuss about how we can show that you know number of viewers who all are viewing the document and also things like we have things like auto suggestions spell and uh, you know grammar check in that non-functional wise uh, you know uh, so it has to be a low latency again uh, you know uh, because people are actually when you are typing other people are seeing it live and they are also editing so latency should be as low as possible right second is consistency that what one user is seeing on one device the same data should be available on other same as what I'm doing right now so basically I'm having two screens on one screen when I'm you know doing these things you are able to see it on on the screen so it the latency should be as low as this then availability again uh, uh, this is important because you know a lot of users are using it for uh, real purposes so even if there are failures in the network even if there are failures in some of the servers then also system should be aware those failures by availability that is what we mean and last is uh, basically again scalability because systems like this grow very fast right so you should be able to handle that growth it is not like when uh, growth is coming you are thinking of you know or it should not stop working because just because suddenly there is 10x of you know your uh, number of live users uh, before we uh, jump to any design let's just uh, discuss some numbers same as we did in other uh, designs so um, i'm here i'm uh, basically uh, assuming that i'm having you know 80 million live users and also i'm assuming that you know one user will create one document so that my math is simple i'm talking about 80 million document creation every day and if you are creating 80 million so normally we think of you know that 20 percent of your data uh, is basically produce 80 percent of your uh, you know uh, consumption basically let's just think of you know out of these documents 20 percent of the documents will have images so when we create do, uh, google document we put images also with the text right so i'm imagining only 20 percent of the document will have it and very less documents are actually putting video so i'm just taking that as two percent with those assumptions i am imagining that you know one document which is only having text will be of size thousand uh, 100 kb by 100 kb what i'm trying to imagine is like you know it will have 2000 lines every document and which is like these many uh, characters so 2000 lines according to me is a very big number uh, but when i tried to get the real number from chat gpt it gave me like they have 
they are having limitations of 17,000 lines, which is like huge. But I'm going ahead with this number, which is a big number in itself. Then uh, basically, um, so if this is the size of uh, going to be the size of the document, which is only having text. So considering that image uh, will be there, I am assuming that, you know, 900 KB will be size of the document which is having images and this this is average obviously some of the documents will be bigger than this some of the document will be way uh, lesser than this and then the document which is having a video the size will be this much so <clears throat> once we established these assumptions uh, what let's just see, uh, see if you know how much storage is required so to store just text uh, basically we need 8 TB, 80 million is going to be our document and just directly multiplied it with our size of the document. Same way uh, in, in maths actually I took 30% of the document are having uh, images. So with this size to 20 TB is what I need and this is on daily basis. This is not the ultimate data. So we can calculate even with this design if we have to run the system for five years how much data will be required right then with videos where i'm considering you know two percent of the two percent of the document will have videos and that will be the size then doing just multiplication i'm getting like 5 tb right so 5 tb in a day is what required so this is for one day then you can think of for five years obviously it will not be a, a direct math because then uh, complexity will also come that you know data will be stale after some time so put them into cold storage and don't keep them into hot storage this is we are talking about the hot storage which is active you know uh, when we are talking about daily active right so anyway uh, that we can ignore for today then uh, on basis of the you know uh, the knowledge we established earlier our total number of servers uh, uh, required are going to be 10,000 servers. That is because 80 million are my daily active users and a server can handle 8,000 requests, right? At a given point of time. So just while doing a simple division, I'm, I got 10K. Again, like I said earlier, it is not possible to you know uh, get the number of servers by just doing uh, this simple math this 8k itself is very approximate right and this simple math is not good enough but i'm just giving an approximation there will be uh, there will be other things which you will realize when you're having a real system running for this solution at that time uh, basically we will get the near to a real number and normally we double even that real number you know for for uh, to having uh, to be able to serve uh, to be able to have the availability of uh, your system you in fact double those numbers having said that how i came to this 8k i discussed last time also that you know uh, there are uh, generally two types of requests which uh, your system can receive one is your cpu bound request and another one is your memory bound request right so i a server typically with 32 gb ram i'm assuming uh, basically it can handle up to only 60 requests and memory bound request a system can handle up to 16k i took half of these numbers and just uh, you know uh, did the uh, addition that that much it can handle so 60 is very less so i simply took 16 by 2 which is 8k request it can handle in parallel now again what is cpu bound is think of uh, operations like if you are requesting for image upload image processing if you will do in your system that is very cpu heavy right in memory if you are querying from db right and it is loading data uh, you know from memory so in so that way it will be memory heavy so uh, it will be you know memory bound because a lot of memory is required in that case right so these are just two examples uh, there can be many examples so normally http requests requests are very very light right 
so a server can handle way more uh, http request if it is just you know coming the request taking something from in memory and returning as you will uh, do start doing more things behind that http request for example when http request is coming then you are starting an image processing uploading image and then normally we do a database call or external call those things will keep your uh, these numbers it will start decreasing these you know request a server can handle uh, in per second okay let's just uh, let's focus on the high level design now and uh, let me first cover uh, this aspect of uh, how client uh, is communicating to server and how server is communicating to you know all the connected uh, clients when they are trying to collaborate when they are trying to edit the document in parallel right <clears throat> so basically because we uh, we need two things here one is we need the low latency uh, whenever somebody you know client one is editing something into the document we want that uh, we want that to be traveled to all other connected clients as soon as possible second thing is to do that we need that when a data is coming from one client to server we want that data to be communicated from our server to client right and that means we need a two-way communication this we could have done via long polling also where clients are continuously checking if you have something for me but that is like uh, you know uh, it is too much overhead for server when every client keep on uh, you know asking for if there is something for me <clears throat> so and that is why to fulfill these two we will go with web sockets right and that is why we will have multiple web socket servers and uh, uh, yeah so one is uh, we we can go with an you can say brute force approach where a, when a client is requesting for a connection it will be it will get connected to optimized server for that particular client by optimized i mean whichever is the nearest and available so latency latency is low or we can also go with an approach where we will connect all the clients uh, you know uh, all all the clients who are collaborating on the same document to same server let's go ahead with the brute force approach which we use in every web socket uh, server management where user might be connected to the optimized uh, for latency server which is like nearest to his location in that case we will need help from another service called web socket manager what this guy is doing is uh, basically this will have info like user uh, user one is actually connected to your uh, server one and user two is connected to maybe server 1000 right things like that whatever is the id of the server so all that info this guy is providing and also clubbing it with like with doc one how many users are actually uh, collaborating on this particular document so that info is sitting with this guy so that whenever a client one is sending something you will be able to ask websocket manager to how many users i need to send this info right so this guy will return list of users and this can uh, you know talk to you can say uh, application server to get that info that how many uh, users are uh, basically uh, on on this particular document and then uh, it can get list of how many how much many are live right now right because that info this is having once it will return the list of users with list uh, with mapping of with on that on which server that particular user is connected to once a, a, a websocket server is having that info, info what it will do is it will connect to that websocket server and it will say that to this uh, client which is maybe you know your socket uh, you can say your socket address to this socket address write this particular thing whatever that data is right now we are not focusing on what data we are just talking about how that communication end to end will happen so it will do directly that now uh, there can be an a further optimization in this communication is that whenever something is coming from our client to one server 
what we are doing is we are asking websocket manager to give us the info you know that entire list and we are um, again and again we are asking for it what we can do is we can keep a local you know in memory cache of that particular data so that again and again we need not to you know uh, check for that info and from here itself we'll read the cache and we'll uh, basically connect to the server and we'll communicate uh, that to that particular client again in that issue can be uh, that uh, you know uh, because let's suppose client 2 was connected to websocket server 2 right but now something happened it this client got disconnected and when again it asked for a connection it might got connected to uh, server 2.1 you know something in between which is near to this location uh, but earlier it was connected to 2 now 2 is full so it is connected to 2.1 and our cache in memory cache is still having something which is older right so that way uh, we might face issues uh, in in that sense so what we can do is to uh, to do that we can have for this cache we will keep our ttl time to live very very less so that it is getting refreshed you know very very fast and we are always having a better um, you can say latest info so that we can set that um, uh, so that we can send data to right server which is uh, basically connected to um, uh, the server with uh, to which the client is connected to right so uh, yeah this is about uh, you can say the connection how via web socket we will do this conversation right and obviously because uh, this info we need to be we need this info very fast so that is why we'll go ahead with uh, redis here a, a cache rather than you know a db in between so now let's focus on um, the real how how this data will travel from client to database and also via websocket how it will uh, get communicated to other live connected users so first thing is what we did is behind uh, these websocket servers we are using operation uh, queue here because what we want to do is uh, so how we are uh, expecting is that from our client we will receive info like um, so we will receive info like that you know uh, user one in basically this document id let's call it dog is basically trying to insert something uh, insert let's suppose this data at this index some you know random index this kind of info we are assuming will travel will start from your client and it will go to the websocket server now <clears throat> basically same way all the users who are working on that document they will send the info to server now what this websocket server will do rather than directly applying it on document it will put all the operations into the queue now what this queue will do uh, this will uh, basically forward that to you know one after another all the operations so that these operations are, are like whoever did something first that thing should be applied on document first so it it is putting it in first in first out fashion and uh, that way we we will make sure all the operations are applied and all the operations are applied in that sequence on the real document now if there is no conflict what this session server will do it will simply uh, basically dump the data into our time series database right we'll talk about time series database uh, on a higher level but it will simply store it if there is conflict then it will apply an algorithm you know whichever algorithm we will discuss uh, those algorithms high level of, of those algorithms in next section uh, but let's suppose we are going with you know whatever let's call it algo uh, you know conflict resolution for now so that conflict resolution algorithm will run on those operations and then once that conflict is resolved then it will store that into your time series database so time series database will ultimately have all the you know operations applied on any document 
now if you have it uh, in parallel what what we will do is we will send all the events to um, let's say kafka basically you know uh, for that pub sub and there will be different topics some an obvious one which are there in most of the systems are you know uh, your uh, basically your notifications and in notifications also you will have multiple things but email i i'm uh, saying explicitly then your services like which can run in asynchronous right like your a view counter and this view counter itself can be uh, think of asynchronous plus uh, basically at, at scale uh, if required right so i'm assuming this is an asynchronous service so it will receive data from kafka rather than it is sitting in a critical path so kafka is being used for that another thing is basically our server uh, will uh, uh, the final thing will be uploaded on your storage uh, and here storage like blob uh, where where uh, basically all the documents will be there and things like images and you know videos will be uploaded uh, on those blob storage and only their link will be linked with the uh, uh, linked with the documents on runtime when client is accessing the document they will actually uh, fetch the you know um, inserted documents uh, on their side from um, uh, from these file providers now when the files are there in the blob these uh, basically uh, though i will discuss about that part also in in the next section these files will be available for your customer via cdn you know content delivery network and we discuss that in detail in youtube uh, design that we will make sure how to you know uh, uh, distribute that data via cdn and how to also you know uh, while distributing it should be optimized it's not like everything is available everywhere so to make sure which data should be there we will optimize this, this part also there so this data is always available via cdn so that whenever you are fetching a document you will get it via cdn when you are doing live communication that will happen via web sockets so you are receiving operations via web sockets right not the document okay now uh, first thing about time series think of like this is a timeline where you know this is like 10 seconds and then 15 seconds and then your 20 seconds something like this so against this the data will be stored here in parallel so anytime you can now you can query like give me all the things till here for and then uh, your sub queries like for this document id uh, you want the data right so history is like very straightforward if you have to fetch it from a time series database so that is why time series database is uh, going to be very useful here but for other data um, you know like user data and your permissions data we will still use sql and nosql so i i'm not uh, putting that in this design then other unnecessarily it will become complicated right so for that i'm having a separate uh, section here i'm only focusing on how you will do you know how you'll apply those operations onto the document and how you, you will communicate it to the other users so yeah on a high level this is how it will be whenever a user is offering a command it will go to websocket from websocket to your operation queues and all the operations will on fifo basis go to your server and then your server will dump it into after conflict resolution it will dump it into your database in this case our database is time series and final state of your document will always be into blob storage and it will be distributed over cdn so that clients can fetch it very fast you know because file downloading is a heavy process so we will not do it via our websocket server or our application server or web server so we want it to be done via cdn and then for all the async processes we we will use kafka um, let's uh, basically now focus on you know uh, so uh, i talked about that there will be an algorithm which will do uh, you know conflict resolution when uh, concurrently users are uh, doing uh, you know editing the document so let's see some simple scenario and we had um, this this string uh, right 
and uh, what happened is user just simply did that at this position means at number two which is like zero one two insert uh, r so when you will do that what will happen uh, basically at this two uh, r will be inserted right and then final output will be this now again if you will insert another insert at three so what will happen is at 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 three basically you will see that u is is there now same way if we will issue command like delete something from zeroth uh, position so what will happen is uh, basically t got deleted now right but uh, so uh, out final output is this arun and if you see what happened is what is happening happening is in every uh, after every operation the indexing is changing so a was at first position earlier now a at zero because zeroth got deleted but when these single operations getting applied means one user is doing it everything is fine there will not be any issue as such right now <clears throat> when will the issue come so let's think of a scenario when two users are actually editing something think of that i am having this uh, uh, string here in the document that this channel is by arun tyagi this is my original statement now two users are actually working on this document user one and user two user one what it did it at this position means after is at 13th uh, index it is inserting so it is actually in in terms of a command or you know the operation it is issuing a command to insert this uh, string which is like four developers at 13 position at the same time user 2 also uh, sent wanted to do another command which is like insert a design platform at the same position now both the operations will reach server right and because as we saw that there is a fifo first in first out so there are chances either this will go first or this will go first right so ultimately there are two possibilities what happened is if my user one input came first so it will be applied and then user two came because user two also uh, basically uh, up that command got applied so user one got overlapped so this became like this is a design platform by arun tyagi in other case when this is getting applied later so what will happen is this is for developer form and form is actually coming as these last four digits from platform because these are uh, so till till uh, plat it got overlapped with developers but form is basically getting appended so the output will be something like this why it is something like this and why it is happening uh, <clears throat> because operations are trying to be getting applied on this original version this original version of the document and it is getting applied at 30th index of this original version right that is why it is getting applied so this is conflict right so operations are getting applied on the same thing let's take another scenario which is for delete okay so if you can see this so now let's suppose in in the document we had this word which is uh, the spelling is wrong maybe there are two extra p's there right so both the users at the same time wanted to delete this so both issued a command that at this index where you know my first p is just delete that at at this particular index at sixth position it reaches to server and because both tried to delete from six what will happen is both the p's got deleted so ultimately you, your output will be something like this which is still wrong right so that is what happens in conflict and obviously there will be complex uh, you know uh, things these two examples are very simple now let's 
check our first technique. <clears throat> so um, there are basically this is you can say the very first famous technique uh, which is being used for conflict resolutions and there is an improved version of it uh, right so this technique is called ot operational transformation and this is basically uh, what it makes sure is if something is happening first then execute it first right so order have to be in that whatever order somebody did it so like if somebody deleted something first then executed it in that fashion right and what it is saying is eventually every copy of the document means all the customers are having a copy of like eventually all of them will be identical so it runs on uh, that principle now what it will do is same example if we had that uh, you know original st statement which we took earlier and same command got issued what this guy will do is when there is a conflict because at same position two users are try trying to insert something what it will do is in operations it will basically apply the ot and it will apply them one after another right so it can be that you know for developers can come first or a design platform can come later but ultimately you will see that final output like this a channel is a design platform our design platform came from second user for developers came from first user by Aruntia you was there already right so what OT did applied those operations in in that ordering right and uh, applied one after another rather than applied on uh, the original string now take the example of that delete thing right so when user will delete what it will do is same same thing that you are trying to delete from six what ot uh, operational transformation um, algorithm will do is because there is a conflict in the operations when you are applying those that means uh, basically it will and both the commands are same so it will not apply both. Um, let's summarize operational transformation first <coughs> before we move to the next uh, you know the algorithm or the strategy which we are having so uh, uh, the base basically um, uh, this is uh, you can say this is an strategy where what is happening is at a centralized location you are sending all the operations you know and that centralized location is basically taking all the operations and resolving the conflict how it is resolving the conflict is when you are providing inputs you know all the operations as input it is providing you the correct output and updated index on those correct outputs uh, so that when you will apply it it will actually give you the ultimate uh, you know that uh, there will not be any conflict uh, in in that if you will apply this so and once you have it you can then uh, basically travel or uh, send it to your clients and client will run it on the document and ultimately all the clients will have same output because they are running it uh, right so <clears throat> if you see that is why on uh, you know systems like google document when you are editing right you have to be online Where if you go online you will not be allowed to edit a document which is uh, you know shared with other users so um, yeah this is about ot and um, just to uh, say one thing so it is like uh, like if we go in our previous example when two users uh, did insertion right so it was like i at um, let's call i to insert so it was like i this at 30 and then it was again from user to i at 13 and some data so ultimately what will happen is when you will pass these two operations let's call it a and this is operations b operation b this when you will pass it to ot ot will ultimately give you a sequence that sequence will be that okay apply a and you have to apply it at 13 for example apply b but b is now like apply b at 
let's say 26 you know because those got covered by something so now b is not b b is something like you know upgraded b or b1 right so operational transformation actually transform that operation so that there is no conflict that is how it is working it's just that to apply operational transformation all the operation needs to be uh, in same central server so all the operations are traveling toward to one server and that server is resolving the conflict in our case that is what our session server is doing right right now let's move to uh, uh, basically a newer uh, so what is the advantage of it before i uh, basically try to explain this um, um, data structure the advantage of it that it it is providing you the power that you need not to be you need not to resolve all the conflict in one server that is why this guy will be you can say provide you very low latency but obviously it will be a complicated one to implement right so what this is it is like uh, they are giving you a data structure and then you have to use an algorithm with this data structure which will help you in resolve conflict or you can say if you will use this data structure with the algorithm you will never have conflict right now just to simplify what uh, this is doing is this data structure is in introducing so again you can have sets you can have trees um, then um, what you can do is rather than having indexes like 0 and 2 we can have indexes like uh, uh, basically a fractional number 1.2 1.5 things like that that way you know conflicts will not be there why is that think of us this simple scenario where we want to insert u after r that means after one so when we will do it what we will do is rather than we will say that insert u at 2 what we will do is we will say insert u at 1.5 right which is between 1 and 2 this is one second is we are issuing a site id also so uh, uh, basically you exactly know where who did what right so if you have these operations and if you will uh, uh, basically transfer these operations to a client a client with this data can run algorithm to resolve conflict in itself it need not to be like all the operation have to travel to one server at one point to resolve that conflict okay um, let's just take one example you know one more example to to see uh, one of the algorithm which is actually using crdt uh, cfrdt so uh, basically this is data structure right so one of the um, algorithm is 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 like think of that let's suppose you have original document say um, which is having a string like arun right so uh, basically how it will actually store this data is you will have a tree like i said this data uh, basically this data structure can be implemented with list tree sets right so uh, and there are many algorithms people are still working on it one of the algorithm is basically which is using tree so in this you will have uh, you know from begin to end there will be uh, nodes in between which will have the real data so when you are having this begin let's suppose here you are having a after this you are having r uh, then here might be you are having a u and here n how it got created it and this is your end and this is your uh, this was your big actually right so we can delete this one <coughs> right now uh, how uh, this got created is uh, maybe because we ran some operation that is why there are different branches right for now let's think of this is how this is what the initial state of this document is now how uh, we are going to read it so it will be like this is 0 1 2 
3, 4, and 5, right? So if you see how to generate a string from this tree, will be like do a depth first search. So when you will do a depth first search, you will get A. Then you will go in depth, you will get R. You will come back. There is no, uh, you know, other uh, branch from A. Then you will come back. You will go to U. You will go to N, right? And how, uh, what will be the ID? Like we were saying that there will be a site ID for everything, right? And so what will be the ID in this case? Like, for example, for R, the ID is 1.2 because you went to 1 and then you went to 2, right? <clears throat> so this is your uh, site ID. Same case for, uh, for example, you, your site ID will be 3 directly. right and uh, so now when you're applying an operation right if any user is applying an operation let's suppose you are trying to insert something at r you know after r so it will be like if you are doing it after r then there will be a new branch got created and so it will be like to 1.2 point you know after uh, this thing you will have a one again here so for let's suppose you inserted an x here so for x which is after r the id is 1.2.1 right so that way every user when it is applying an operation there will be a separate id there will be uh, you know then data defined here so ultimately when from different documents you are getting different uh, trees you will be able to run those operations to get a final uh, you know a final tree and a final output that this is my final output because one user applied at 1.2.1 one user might did 1.2. something and how we are choosing these id is actually the the real algorithm then for that there are many papers we we can read any paper for example that how they are doing it because again these are classic uh, tree problem that how you will make sure that your tree is always you know a balanced so that when you are doing depth first search uh, your performance is not taken a hit because might be your tree is growing you know in in one side only so there are papers for it but this is what it is using this is how it is using this uh, data type which is having extra information to ultimately convert the data which is you know a user is viewing and how it is actually stored when uh, you know uh, that data so that we are able to resolve those conflicts and i took example 1.2.1 for simplicity we can you know use user id uh, for to have that that you know all the users are not generating 1.2.1 right so users will generate 1.2. something user id dot one something like that right so it will be like ids itself will be different site so we are calling them sites sites will be different that way you will know what to do right and you know the state also at what state what got applied so that uh, you can run uh, all the operations easily on it and ultimately you will have a final state which will be conflict free so this way uh, basically what is not required is you do not need a central server when you have these states uh, ultimately document uh, uh, basically will be uh, these these states will be will travel to other clients and these clients itself can generate this state so hence a distributed you know server you can say can have uh, uh, this data structure with with algorithm to basically finally uh, implement this kind of conflict resolution or you can say there is no conflict Okay, now let's <clears throat> move to the last section of this design. Uh, basically, there are other aspects which we haven't discussed uh, about this design is, and I'm going to touch uh, those. So I just added some things in, in our previous high level design and also removed some like notifications and all because I'm not going to, I'm not discussing those in details here, uh, right? 
we are, we the, those are like common things which we are discussing in every design in any design case is getting very long <coughs> so I'll, I'll 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 basically discuss one by one first is we already discussed about why we used uh, something like time series database right and what kind of data we are storing here so you know the entire history and all now we will uh, basically also use sql database and the data which we are going to store here is you know entire user uh, um, data plus permissions who is having permission to edit who is having permission to view who is having permission to comment and all those things so that is because very relational uh, you can say data in nature so for that we will still use our sql database then for things like you know comments on a document so this is very social uh, you can say social network uh, 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 kind of info by social network i mean is uh, when you uh, do comments on a tweet or you know on a post on facebook or insta so it is like very similar structure to that which which is very uh, you can say it performs better in a no sql db because you can directly go and fetch all the uh, comments of one particular uh, in one particular document so these uh, three we are using and one thing though we already discussed about it one uh, earlier is basically we will have a cdn right and uh, that is from where our clients will directly uh, fetch all kind of files and uh, you can say the files which are inserted inside a file for example in a document you will have videos and images those will directly come from your content delivery network now things like um, type ahead or you know when you are typing auto suggestions and all those things for that we will have a service and uh, uh, so, so whenever you are typing because you are connected this service can uh, return all those suggestions because it is uh, kind of having stored that structure into into the NoSQL and for help if you know all that that we have to give a better performance uh, low latency and if there is an overhead we will always introduce we can always introduce cache in between right though uh, for simplicity uh, for simplicity I haven't added those things here for all other kind of works you know creation of document and you know uh, connecting to other services there will be application service uh, server which is uh, you know uh, which will do you know all other jobs when you are adding a user into the document when you are providing the permissions so all those things will still go via an application server also you know uh, things like um, when operations are happening and you have to upload those documents to to cdn so all those things will happen uh, via application server now again uh, to highlight that that all the components in our previous design and this design are basically uh, you can say uh, they can scale because they are doing one one job and they are not tightly coupled with anything so they they can be hundred uh, you know hundred of instances of type ahead server in one particular region or you know so these, these can be distributed systems in, in themselves and always there will be load balance and you know in, in front of those to distribute the load among among these things so that way uh, you know both your availability your scalability can be handled easily here right so i think yeah that that is uh, all about google document we focused on the collaborative um, you know edit of it we discussed uh, the main uh, algorithms which are being used for uh, you can say for your concurrency edits uh, to resolve the conflicts and we also just very on a very high level uh, saw the other aspects of it like how type ahead as suggestions can be there means um, there can be separate services and you know uh, how we can serve things like the history edit of one particular document so that's it thank you very much guys